we got to spend an amazing three weeks in Japan. And an unforgettable part of this trip was the famous city of Kyoto. Is this city really a showcase of all that Japan has to offer? We hit up a bunch of awesome places to share with you guys so you can decide. Make sure to stay tuned to the end where we come across a unique spot that you won't want to miss. It's probably the cutest thing ever, just saying. Let's start with a quick rundown of the city. Kyoto is an ancient city in Japan with a rich history and culture dating back thousands of years. Some call it the city of 10,000 temples because of the thousands of Buddhist temples all over the city. The amount of modern attractions, beautiful gardens, parks, shrines, and architectural wonders are renowned around the world. Lots of people who have traveled to Japan said this was their favorite place and would choose this city if they could only pick one place to visit in all of Japan. Kyoto's Shimbashi district is where we started. The streets are lined with traditional restaurants, shops, and tea houses, including the popular Nishiki Market, which we'll get to a little later. The area is home to some of Kyoto's most fascinating temples, like the Nijojo Shaka Inn Temple, where visitors can marvel at the beauty of its ancient architecture. Walking through its narrow roads and alleys, it's easy to feel overwhelmed by the energy and beauty of the district. You can sense the secrets tucked away within the ancient stones and the whispers of the past all around you. This is a traditional area and one where you can feel the warmth and hospitality of the locals as you explore. Shimbashi is a place of wonder, discovery, and the perfect place to be transported back to the Edo period while still appreciating the modern spirit of the city. Nearby is Pantocho Alley, a narrow street located in the heart of Kyoto. It is renowned for its traditional atmosphere and unique culture. Pantocho Alley has been a popular destination for visitors since the Edo period, when it served as the entertainment district with many restaurants and tea houses. Today, it remains one of the most popular spots in Kyoto, drawing tourists from all over the world to experience its old world charm. In addition to its traditional architecture and atmosphere, Pantocho Alley offers a variety of cultural activities such as geisha performances and rakugo storytelling shows. Visitors can also enjoy numerous restaurants that serve traditional Japanese cuisine such as sushi tempura and kaisen. Seki Ryori. For those looking for authentic Japanese food, look no further. Pantocho Alley is the real deal. Next up is Yasaka Shrine. It is one of the most famous shrines in all of Japan. Considered to be an important part of Japanese culture and history, the shrine was originally built in 656 AD. This beautiful shrine is located on the east side of the city near the Gion district. As you approach the shrine, you can't help but be drawn to it like the rest of the crowds. As we entered, we instantly got hungry as we were bombarded with the smells from all the food stalls. Take your time and taste some of the most amazing traditional street food in all of Kyoto. As you make your way further in, you will approach the main hall. Here you'll see locals ringing bells and praying to the gods. Spend time exploring and enjoy the temple grounds. Whether you're visiting for spiritual reasons or simply as a tourist, Yusaka Shrine will give you an unforgettable experience. Near the shrine is the Gion Entertainment District. It is known for its vibrant nightlife, traditional Japanese architecture, and numerous festivals and cultural events. Here you can find everything from traditional tea houses to modern bars and restaurants, making it an ideal destination for travelers looking for a unique experience. The Gion District in Kyoto is also home to some of the most iconic and mysterious entertainers in Japan, the geishas. It has been a traditional entertainment district since the Edo period and is still home to many geishas today. The district is also home to many restaurants and shops that are frequented by geishas, making it an ideal spot to see one in person. Please keep in mind that photographing them is normally not allowed, so check local signs to stay up to date. Up next, we have the Fushimi Inari Shrine. This is one of the most iconic shrines that has been standing since the 8th century. You'll probably recognize it as one of the most beloved shrines in all of Japan and a must-see when you visit Kyoto. The shrine is home to thousands of vibrant orange torii gates that line the path up to the top of Mount Inari. As you walk along this path, you will be surrounded by lush greenery and stunning views of the Kyoto cityscape. Fushimi Inari Shrine is also known for its sacred fox statues, which are said to be messengers from the gods. You'll probably want to hit up the shrine early in the day and first if possible, because if you want to take it all in, you're gonna be getting a workout. As we made our way up the mountain path through the Tori gates, we got to really see everything that this shrine has to offer. It was truly peaceful, and the higher you go, the less people you'll be surrounded by, which makes the experience better as well. The way down is welcomed as you will probably be a little bit exhausted from the steep climb like we were. And if you really want to experience the temple again in a different light, or lack thereof, make sure to come by at night. The entire atmosphere changes and the shrine is lit up in a very unique way. 
As a matter of fact, we recommend you see a lot of these spots at night and see how they change. Now this next temple is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Kiyomizu Temple. It is one of the most visited temples in the country and is known for its stunning architecture and beautiful views of the city. The temple was built in 798 AD and has been a part of Japanese culture ever since. Visitors can explore the grounds, take part in traditional ceremonies, and learn about the history of the unique site. As we approach the temple, we couldn't help but be in awe of the size and the height. Again, be prepared for a bit of a steep climb. Getting to the top and taking it all in makes it worth it though. We enjoyed the surrounding scenery before making our way down through all the traditional shops and restaurants. It's easy to get swept away here and want to look at every little nook and cranny. We make our way now to the Sirocco Aqueduct in Kyoto. It is located in the Nanzenji Temple Grounds. This iconic structure has been around since the Edo period. It really stands out amongst the other temples in the area. The aqueduct stands as a reminder of how advanced engineering techniques were used in Japan during this time period. It was built to transport water from Lake Biwa to Kyoto, providing the city with a reliable source of clean drinking water. Today, the aqueduct is still in use and serves as a popular tourist attraction. Hang out, explore, and take it all in. Walking through here is truly a magical feeling. Speaking of magical feelings, coming here in the fall is when you want to be here. Kyoto is a city full of history and culture and the fall season brings out the best of it. When the leaves turn to beautiful shades of red and orange, Kyoto's temples become even more stunning. From the vibrant foliage that covers the sacred sites to the peaceful atmosphere that surrounds them, Kyoto's temples are a must-see during this time of year. So if you're looking for a unique way to experience Japan's culture, then come explore Kyoto's temples in the fall. There were simply too many temples that we saw in film that it would be difficult to show you guys all of them in one video. So you can rest easy knowing that you won't run out of temples to see here. Time for a little break from the amazing temples to talk about the food. Kyoto is where the flavors of Japan really went in overdrive for us. From traditional Japanese dishes to modern fusion cuisine, Kyoto has it all. Whether you're looking for a quick bite or an elaborate meal, there's something for everyone in this vibrant city. We could not stop eating the whole time we were here. Everything, and I mean everything was full of so much flavor and loved by the people who made the food. Make sure to try as much as possible while you're here. Now that we're done stuffing our faces with all of the awesome food, let's head over to the northwest part of Kyoto and check out another temple. The Tenryuji Temple, which is another iconic temple in Kyoto. Built in 1339 by the shogun Ashikaga Takauji, it was originally intended to be a memorial temple for the emperor Go-Daigo. The temple is known for its exquisite gardens and stunning architecture, which are considered some of the best examples of traditional Japanese garden design. Tenryoji also houses a number of important cultural artifacts and is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. We really enjoyed its serene atmosphere while we walked through its paths and got to appreciate its beauty from different angles. This is a must-visit site for anyone looking to explore the history and culture of Kyoto. Now before we get to the rest of the video, if you're enjoying our content, please make sure to subscribe. It will help us in creating more videos for you guys. Right outside the Tenryuji Temple Grounds is the world-famous Arashiyama Bamboo Grove. It's a beautiful area of lush greenery and towering bamboo stalks that has been attracting visitors for centuries. The grove is a place of serenity where you can take a peaceful stroll and admire the beauty of its nature. With its majestic scenery and historical significance, Arashiyama Bamboo Grove is an essential part of any Kyoto visit. We'd heard so much about it and it lived up to the hype for sure. Just make sure to get here early if you want to avoid the crowds. Everyone is here trying to get their perfect Instagram worthy shot. After the bamboo grove, we're going to head to another popular spot you're not going to want to miss nearby. But in order to get there, we need to cross the Togetsu Kyo Bridge, which is an iconic landmark itself. This landmark has been standing since the 14th century. It is one of the most famous symbols of Kyoto and has been featured in countless films and TV shows. The bridge is located over the Katsura River, which provides a stunning backdrop for this picturesque setting. Enjoy the peaceful walk while you can because you're going to have to tap into more of their stamina for the next location after the bridge. We're headed to the Arashiyama Monkey Park. Located on the western outskirts of Kyoto, this park is home to over 170 Japanese macaws, also known as snow monkeys. But before you can get in, get ready for a hike up the mountain. This one also tested our cardio fitness, but it was definitely worth it. On your way up, you'll also get a heads up on the rules, which are standard with any wild monkeys you encounter. Don't look them in the eyes, feed them, and make sure to put away anything they can take from you for fun. We had no issues as the monkeys mostly kept to themselves, and there were professional staff everywhere keeping an eye on things. You can observe these monkeys in their natural habitat and interact with them up close by feeding them through a special fenced room if you want. Being able to experience them this close and see all the mischief they get into was really something special. There are very few places in the world where you can enjoy something like this. 
The park also provides breathtaking views of the nearby mountain range and offers plenty of activities like hiking and bird watching. Whether you're a nature enthusiast or just looking for an adventure, Arashiyama Monkey Park in Kyoto is worth a visit. Enjoy the views at the top. Kyoto isn't all temples and parks though. We also enjoyed geeking out over at the Manga Museum near downtown, which showcases the incredible artistry and creativity that goes into creating manga. The museum has a vast collection of manga from different genres, from classics to contemporary, that you can just grab and start reading. Visitors can explore a wide range of topics related to manga and get an insight into the history and its culture. You can also take part in workshops and lectures about manga or even create your own manga story. A standout section of the museum for us was a room where they had made hand molds of famous manga artists. This was really cool and fun because they had a sketch next to each of the hands, so even if you didn't know their names, you might recognize their unique styles. Another great spot to check out is Nishiki Market. Nishiki Market in Kyoto is a bustling marketplace with traditional Japanese foods, crafts, and souvenirs. It is known as Kyoto's Kitchen and has been operating since the Edo period as well, like many other places. With more than 100 shops and stalls, Nishiki Market offers an amazing variety of items. Be ready to lose your personal space because this place can get crowded. That's also what helps give it its unique charm. Whether you're looking for something fresh to eat, cook at home, or something special to take back home as a gift, Nishiki Market is the place for you. As you make your way through the end of Nishiki Market, you're gonna run into a pretty cool indoor and outdoor mall. In this mall is where you'll find Koei Donuts. This donut shop offers a wide selection of delicious and unique donuts that are sure to satisfy any sweet tooth. Whether you're looking for traditional flavors or something more adventurous, Koei Donuts has something for everyone. You can also watch the chefs put all their love and care into these amazing tasting donuts. With its friendly staff and great atmosphere, Koei Donuts is a great spot to grab a quick snack and a coffee. Now after a little snack, Megan found something she couldn't resist checking out. And who am I kidding, I couldn't resist either. It was the My Pig Cafe. This is the very first theme cafe where you can meet and hang out with micro pigs. Make sure to reserve your time spot and then get ready to be surrounded. And I mean surrounded, swarmed, and cuddled by micro pigs. You head up to your specified floor and then have a seat with a blanket placed over your legs. Then you get to enjoy and pet your little friends. I was lucky enough to have a pig pile on me as the little pigs love to cuddle and get cozy. Some are a little more mischievous than others and there was also a little guy that kept attempting his escape constantly. It was pretty hilarious. Kyoto was truly a magical place for us and it really stood out during our three week trip in Japan. Was it worth the hype? We think so. Now, if you'd like to check some hidden gems in Japan as well that will give you a unique experience, make sure to check out our hidden gems video. You won't want to miss these spots.